A belt can be a great improvised personal protection tool to deter the danger of someone intent on causing you or another bodily harm. It is your responsibility to know your state and local laws regarding the use of deadly or lethal force when it comes to self-defense. Be sure to research them and know your rights before you use any technique or device to protect yourself or others. Hi, if you have purchased a Flail Force Protection Belt, I want to thank you. I spent a lot of time researching and testing what would be a fashionable design for men and women, yet be inconspicuous for self-defense. The result is a minimalist standard strap with durable hardware giving just the right amount of weight and flexibility. But the special feature that makes the Flail Force unique is the solid brass or steel ball bearing near the buckle to create a perfect balance for swinging, yet could cause severe injury if needed. Let's be real, no one wants to take the chance of getting flailed. Before I get started, I want to make this perfectly clear. Be sure to practice belt techniques safely. Make sure you have at least a 10 foot radius free of anyone or thing that could get hit or get in the way of a swing. Be sure no one is around who could accidentally come within range, especially children or pets. Do not practice near any moving vehicles or running machinery where the belt could get lodged. Even though a belt is not inherently dangerous, the technique could kill someone or cause serious permanent injury. So be smart when practicing. Choose a space wisely and wear protective gear while practicing so that if you have an accident, you can lessen the chances of getting hurt. I suggest that you practice slowly at first. Reverse the belt so you are wrapping with the buckle end until you feel confident with executing the swing. The tip of the belt will less likely cause any serious injury. Once you get the hang of it, try hitting a coconut or a butternut squash. Stay away from gym bags or punching bags or that Century Bob guy who's made out of rubber because those items can cause the buckle to bounce back at you. First thing to know is how to wear and remove this particular belt or any belt that you want to have as a personal protection tool. Although the Flail Force belt can be worn through the loops of pants, it is sized for the standard one and a half inch width loop but one inch longer in length because I recommend wearing this belt over your current belt covering it and not through the loops. Why? This is so you can remove it without any friction caused by the pulling through the loops as you remove it, slowing you down. Plus, you don't want to be worried about your pants falling down. Flail Force also has an offset tip loop so that you can easily grab the tip of the belt without having to pinch the strap like regular belts that have a tip loop near the heel of the buckle. You don't want to have to fuss with removing a belt when time is of the essence. When removing the belt, keep your eyes forward on the person or persons and check your sides to be sure there is no one else that might be sneaking up on you. Be alert to your surroundings. Next is the wrapping of the tip around your hand. It doesn't matter if you are a righty or a lefty. After removing the belt, place the tip pointing to you in your palm, then come around the back of your hand over the inside of your wrist, then back over the top of your wrist where the face of your watch would be, then back into your palm and grip firmly. Put the leg forward that is on the same side of the arm you are using to swing. Hold the buckle side up and out in front, giving you some preliminary defense while wrapping the tip with your primary hand. The common way to swing a belt is in a figure eight pattern. However, I find this to be less efficient and hazardous because you need plenty of swing area and if you are in a confined space, you might not have enough room to create an effective swing. Or if you don't keep the force going, the belt can fall back on you and cause you injury. I like to send the buckle down the center line between me and the attacker while holding my opposite hand, palm out, telegraphing a I don't want any trouble, leave me alone manner so that anyone witnessing can see I am not trying to start a confrontation, just trying to prevent one. 
As you keep the belt in motion, shout for help. Use an emergency whistle, which I recommend as well. Be aware of the surroundings too, in case there is more than one person that might act in conjunction with the person you are deterring. The more attention you bring to the situation, the better. Most people don't want a difficult target. The more you do to lessen your vulnerability, you deter the danger. Removing the belt, wrapping the tip, and swinging are all steps you really have to practice. Your goal is to be able to remove the belt and wrap it within one second. When flailing the belt, feel the forward inertia of the buckle and ball bearing from the force of your swing. Quickly tug it back when it reaches the end before it can drop, returning it to the opposite side using your hips to catch the buckle as it slows down. Keep repeating this for a controlled, more accurate flail. Targets can be an attacker's hands, knees, or ankles. Of course, you can switch to the overhead figure eight style, just be sure you have enough room. Remember, your intent is to deter a person from causing you harm if you have no way to safely escape. If you go for someone's head, it better be a life-threatening situation. Like I said at the beginning, know your rights to lethal self-defense in your state. You can even wrap the belt a little more to shorten its length to have more control in a tight space like on a subway, stairway, between parked cars, or even in the aisle of a plane or train. This belt technique should buy you time to yell for help and create a safe distance from an attacker and keep them away from you. I hope you never have to use a belt in this way, but if you do, don't try and wing it. Practice and study self-defense techniques. Thanks for watching. Be sure to send me an email at damnwingchung at gmail.com so I can keep you posted on Flail Force products. Also, head over to my YouTube channel, Fighters Lab, and subscribe. Thanks again for your time, and I hope you enjoy your Flail Force belt.